What's up everybody? Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for pressing play. Today we are going to fix a massive problem with the C8 Corvette that hasn't really been documented very well and it's a pretty easy fix. So let's jump into it now. All right guys, so this particular issue with the C8 Corvette is pretty massive, especially if you plan on keeping this car for any length of time. Now, if you grab one of these and you're planning on keeping it for a year or two before jumping up to the Z06, and then another year or two before jumping up to the ZR1, this may not be a gigantic issue for you, but if you plan on keeping this car for a couple years or even for the rest of the generation, this is something you should really take a look at. What we're referring to today is actually going to be the strut mounts. So in the front, where the struts connect to the body of the car, there is an issue, and it's a weird one. So we're gonna get a little bit more into that in a second, but what we're gonna do now is actually come over to the workbench here and talk a little bit about the company that is providing said fix. Now, the name of the company actually kind of gives away what we're doing here, but I like their vinyl, and that may find its way under the car at some point. I really like that outline of the C8. It's pretty cool. Eric over at C8StruckCovers.com was gracious enough to send me two of his products, one for and one without the magnetic ride control, because that does matter. That's gonna make a difference in the installation. Obviously, my C8 Corvette has the mag ride option, so we're gonna use the mag ride covers here. And then the non-mag ride is going to be a giveaway, I guess. So let's, let's call it a giveaway. Eric didn't really tell me what he wanted me to do with them, so I'm thinking we're gonna give them away. So if you guys have a C8 Corvette that does not have the mag ride option, and you would like to win these, just shoot in the comments the non-mag ride version and you will be entered to win. I will choose a winner within the next two weeks after this video goes live and you will get a set of these strut covers for your own C8 Corvette. Now, obviously we can't talk too much about this stuff without actually doing it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install them as well. That way, if you do end up winning the non-mag ride version, you'll know how to install them. It's not very difficult and it ends up being a huge benefit, like I said, especially if you keep the car for a while. Now, what we're gonna do is actually take the plastic around the frunk there. We're gonna take that off and that's gonna reveal to us the strut towers. Now, once we get to that point, you're gonna understand more why we're doing this because there is just going to be a massive amount of water just sitting on the bolts that connect the strut to the chassis of the car. And that's a problem because once those rust, yeah, it's gonna to be tough to ever get those off. They could break. I mean, there's a million different problems with that idea. I'm surprised GM hasn't done something about this yet because I've heard one or two other people talking about this and it ends up being an issue. It seems like something that will probably be fixed by the time the Z06 or ZR1 comes out. All they really would have to do is either just put little drain holes or possibly just get rid of the waffle weave piece. You'll understand a little bit more in a second once we tear into this thing. So let's jump into it. And real quick guys, I wanted to give you a little glimpse into why there is a difference between the mag ride and the non mag ride version. As you can see, there is a little cup on the mag ride version, whereas the non mag ride is completely flat. So this will sit right on top of the strut mount and be totally flat. Whereas this will have just a little bit of an elevation to allow the mag ride wire to exit off the top of the strut without pinching it and causing further issues. Pretty simplistic, nothing to break, nothing to go wrong. These are plastic of some kind, probably ABS if I had to guess and they're not gonna rust, they're not gonna corrode, they're just going to stop water from entering into that strut mount. So let's tear into it and take a look at how much water is actually sitting in mine. Okay, so believe it or not, this particular fix involves no tools, zero tools, yes. You heard me right, no tools. So this entire piece here, all of the plastic we're gonna have to remove to expose the strut towers can be removed by just grabbing and yanking on stuff. This is the best kind of example of GM and their quality at work. It's not necessarily a problem in this situation because this doesn't cause any kind of rattles or anything, but at the same time, this stuff's all held in with just clips. So if we just grab and start yanking on stuff, you'll see, yeah, it comes off and slides out. That's that, so that's one piece completely off. As you can see, we got four clips holding that piece in, obviously built to be easily removed. So we'll just set that in there for now. Ultimately, what we need to do is get this larger black piece off because right under here is where that strut tower is at. Now we'll come over to the passenger side and kind of do the same thing, just grab and start yanking on stuff. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is America at its finest right here. But like I said, I'm okay with it. 
So with these two side pieces off, we can now focus on this larger middle piece here, which is the same thing. It's all clips. We're not gonna need any tools for this. So grab and pull until that piece is completely off and then that's gonna expose the battery, the brake reservoir, of course the windshield washer reservoir and the two strut mounts. Like I said, more grabbing, more yanking. So we'll start right here, pull up. We got one piece off, just keep pulling it until it all comes out. Now, this probably sounds a lot worse than it actually is. This is all coming out pretty easily. There's not really anything breaking or anything, which is key with anything like this, but that's it. We are now free. This is built to come off easily because you are supposed to be able to access this area relatively easily. This is also where you would change the cabin air filter. GM wanted you to be able to get in there pretty easy to get this stuff done. For any of you out there who haven't seen the C8 Corvette and this particular piece removed yet, we have access to a couple different things here. Obviously the cabin air filter is right here. We have a little bit of an intake tube right there, your battery, brake fluid, windshield washer, and of course the two strut mounts, which are right there and right there. And then in my case, this would be the front end lift reservoir as well let's get to the star of the show and that is of course the strut mounts and as you can see they're perfectly flat in there which I actually thought they were angled based on some of the other videos I've seen but the waffle pieces are kind of at an angle which of course holds water on the driver's side you can see that strut nut right there is completely submerged in water. That one nut will easily be rusted to the point where you would not be able to remove it. Possibly it could break. And of course that does take time. So this isn't something that would happen in a week. Like I said, if you plan on keeping the car for any length of time, that could be a real concern. Now, especially if we look at the passenger side, this is where there's a lot of water. So every one of these nuts in here, except for the one on the very far outside has water in it. And actually that one does too, just not as much. These ones are literally filled to the brim. And as you can see on this strut nut right there, there's already rust forming on it. I haven't even had this car a year yet and that is already getting rusty. This is exactly why we're gonna do this fix today. What we're gonna do is kind of blow the water out of there and then put these caps on. And the caps, they just, pretty much sit on there. I mean, there's nothing magical to this. It's just gonna stop water from sitting in those cavities on the strut mounts. So that's pretty much it. That's our video today. I absolutely love simple fixes to what would possibly be major issues. This is why I love the Corvette community though. They just make these little products that just don't look like anything impressive by themselves, but they are absolute massive lifesavers when it comes to stuff like this. So while I'm grabbing the parts here, guys, I see this sticker on the bottom and it does actually confirm this is ABS plastic in case any of you really wanted to know. Interestingly enough, it calls attention to the front lift cars because there was an issue with some of the caps leaking. And if they leak, can of course damage the ABS of this. So you wanna make sure if that's leaking to get that fixed first. All right guys, so you're gonna hate me because this is not a completely toolless installation. There is one 10 millimeter bolt that is going to require a 10 millimeter socket. Other than that, totally tool free. I really said that in the beginning because to remove the plastic around the frunk, you can just grab and pull it. But I really thought this is in this whole installation was in fact toolless, but there's one bolt that will go through here on the driver's side. And then on the passenger side, it's just a zip tie that holds it down. So unfortunately you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. So what we have to do for the driver's side is to remove a 10 millimeter bolt right there on the back side of the windshield washer fluid tank. And then we also have to remove that wire harness right there. It's held in with a little Christmas tree style thing. Pull that out and then slip the cover underneath it. And then of course put the 10 millimeter bolt back in. Now the same kind of thing happens over on the passenger side only instead of the 10 millimeter nut, they give you a zip tie to tie on that side. And then on the back side, there is some 3M tape that will keep it stuck in place. But first things first, let's clean that water out of there. So the easiest way to remove that water standing still in there is probably a towel, a rag of some kind, but I'm gonna employ this little guy right here, some compressed air. We're just gonna blow that water right out of there. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it worked, it worked. Got some on the camera though. All right, so compressed air might not be the best method, but it did get it pretty dry in there. And as you can see, there is a little bit of rust on there. This is definitely something everybody should be doing on these cars, especially for the price of these covers. You might as well have that insurance. I'm gonna blow the water out of that one as well. And it's gonna be a messy endeavor again, so I'm not gonna show you, but you can blow it out. You can use a rag or a paper towel or something to absorb it out of those crevices. But ultimately you want those to be dry before we install these covers. We got the passenger side one all cleaned up and you can actually see the water has stained the aluminum 
on this side right here and these are the deepest ones so there was a lot of water in there i actually stuck three paper towels down in here and it filled up all three of them and still left water in there so i had to use my compressed air method and blow it out and of course it shot water everywhere but it is all dry now so we're going to go ahead and install the driver's side cover first so on the driver's side the first step is going to be to take this 10 millimeter bolt out like i said this is literally the only part of this entire install that requires a tool of any kind once this is totally out, we can then go ahead and remove the wire harness back here. With that bolt out, we'll go ahead and remove this wire harness back here, which is really just a push clip, so we can kind of just pull it like that. So with that out of the way, we can now go ahead and slide the cover in place. So the instructions say to kind of angle it and then slide it into place, just like that. And then of course we want to make sure that 10 millimeter bolt hole lines up here. So that's pretty much it. We are fully installed. We'll just put that 10 millimeter bolt back in there and that's it for the driver's side. The passenger side is a little more difficult because it's gonna run into the end of the AC line here. There's some 3M tape here that will stick it in the back. And in this loop right here, there's actually a zip tie that they provide that you'll actually zip tie over top of a piece of this AC line. It's pretty difficult to get it in there. You have to kind of put it in at a certain angle and then twist it into place. I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So there you can see it kind of popped into place and you just kind of got to twist it until it's perfectly covering that strut mount. And it is tight. The passenger side is a little tighter, a little harder to get done than the driver's side. But you will feel it once it's in place. It's pretty solid in there afterwards, even before a zip tie. But especially on the mag ride car, you'll see it's fitting perfectly over top of that mag ride wire. And then of course down here, we have that hole that we will zip tie it to the AC line. Otherwise, it is pretty solid on there. So we're pretty much good to go here. I'm gonna zip tie that thing in place and then start putting all this stuff back together. Now these strut mounts are not gonna be able to have any water run onto them. Obviously the water was coming from the windshield area from the plastic that covers it here and then running in just kind of laying in here. Now it's gonna hit these and since they're angled, it's gonna run down and ultimately out the bottom of the car instead of sitting in there. Obviously I haven't even had mine a year and those things have already started to show a little bit of rust on them. Imagine that same thing in four years, in five years. It's going to get to the point eventually where it's a problem. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. This is totally protected now for the future. I don't know how long I'll actually have this car because at this point, the 2023 Z06, if it comes in 2023, that's the car I'm going to have anyway. This car is not necessarily going to stick around for a whole lot longer, but if it were, this is no longer going to be an issue for me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the plastic back in, obviously button all this stuff back up, but it is totally done. The install was really simple. If you want to check them out, I will put all of their information in the description down below but eric has been really cool to work with he definitely knows his stuff he got these out to me asap and like i said if you guys don't have a magnetic ride control car shoot the comment down below and let me know and get entered to win the non magnetic ride control covers that you can have for free if your name is drawn two weeks after this video goes live but like i said guys that is going to do it for today's video so if you liked what you saw here please give me a big thumbs up if you have any questions about the content about these strut mount covers or anything we've talked about today shoot them in the comment section down below or send me an email horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com and i will make sure you get an answer if you guys haven't subscribed yet please do i'm going to have loads of corvette content coming you are not going to want to miss and as always, guys, I will catch you in the next upload.